made him their Lord. What he says is what they do. What he says is what goes. And then they learn to love Jesus. You have to learn to love Jesus. You do that with relationship. The Holy Spirit even gives you that agape love so you can love Jesus and love one another in the Lord. And that faith that you have begins to be directed at Jesus. You see Him for who He is. And as you read God's Word, you're being renewed. Your hope now is in Christ. Amen. You know no matter what, heaven is your home. That blessed hope. And one of these days, no matter what happens, if it's through the rapture, no matter which way it is, you know where you're going to be. Amen. You believe that. And if you're sick and you're believing God for something, you know He's the healer. When the doctor Amen. says, I can't do anything more for you. Amen. And thank God for the doctors when they can do something more for you. But when they cannot, you still, you know that Jesus can. Right. You believe, I said believe, you believe He can. There's only one thing lacking. Only one thing lacking. I used to ask Brother Price about it. I already made my own conclusions, but I'd ask him anyway to see, to see uh, what he'd say. Because what he would say, I would, I would, you know, I wouldn't just accept it. I, I'd go pray about it and study it. But every time I'd ask him something, he already, you know, hey, I already came to that conclusion. Why, why, are you, why did you come to my conclusion? So he would, he, I would ask him certain things. And all it takes is the power of God being available. If the, when the power of God is available to you, you have faith to be healed. If you've made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you have faith. Don't let somebody tell you you don't have enough faith. Don't let somebody tell you you got to read all my books and hear, hear, hear my tapes or CDs or whatever it is they use nowadays, videos. Yeah, don't let anybody tell you you've got to go to learn all that. If you have Christ and you're serving Him, you have faith. Yeah. You just need the faith, the power of God to be present to heal you. You get a combination of those two, two things together and you got a miracle. Thank you, Lord. Good. God. And a lot of times it's not instantaneous like Jesus had it. But the miracle started. That's okay. Yeah. Many have been healed. I've been healed that way. The miracle started. And then before you know it, bang, you're well. You go to the doctor. You get all those tests to make sure it just wasn't up here. And they said, well, I don't know what happened uh, you don't have that anymore. I've had doctors tell me that. Yeah. One time I had to go get surgery. Another time they wanted surgery, but uh, you don't have that, that, that situation anymore. What, what happened? I said, the Lord healed me. Amen. Then they kind of, you know, kind of, oh, tell them, we tell them anyway. <laughs> So, to answer the question for the final time, if Christians are not healed today, is it because they have no faith? The answer is no. You have faith to be healed. So what do we do? We need to pray. I wish our churches would begin to pray. Not just for a revival. Because it's so easy. Let's pray for a revival. And I know when some say revival, Chris has been praying for revival for years. My son here. But I know what he means because we've talked at length about it. Praying that God would bring healing back to the church. Amen. There have been seasons in our history, in church history. I'm just thinking of this country because that's all I know. The rest I just read about. But the ones that I know more, that I am more familiar with, that God would just begin to bring healing back. Because we need to be healed. We need to be healed. The power of God needs to be present in our services. That's why we need to put Jesus first. That's why we need to kick all of this kind of preaching uh, that's about how to get stuff and how to be happy and, and how to this and how to that. We need to get it out of the church. Put that in the classroom somewhere. In the school room. We need to bring Jesus. Worship Jesus. Tell Him we need Him. We, we seek Him. And be praying to, to the Father in the name of Jesus like he instructed us. And make that our heartfelt prayer. And pray for one another. And pray for one another. Because it's going to be up to God. We, we used to sing, oh, Lord send the power just now. Lord send the power just now. Oh Lord send the power just now. But they only talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And baptize everyone. I want to change that. Send the power just now. Heal everyone. 
that would start a revival. Amen. A move like that in any church will start a revival. The house would be packed. There'd be people. You see these doors? I'd have to put three guys at each door to, to guard the doors. They'd be climbing up on the roof to see if they could take some of the, the, the stuff out to get in. People will get desperate when the need's desperate. Yeah, that's, right. that's what we need to have in our churches. Yes. Healing! Amen. But don't let anybody discourage you that you don't, but that's the voice of the enemy. Yes. Well, you don't have enough faith. You're not spiritual enough. That's the voice of the enemy. You have faith to be healed. You are spiritual enough. Then none of us perfect. If you belong to God and you're serving Him, and when you make a mistake, you say, Father, forgive me, you just get back up on your feet, and you stay in faith and believe God. Mm -hmm. And believe God. Ask Him for your healing. That's what you do. Keep asking. And keep on asking until you get it. And if you don't get it, die asking. And when you see Him on the other side of glory, if He wants to, He'll tell you why. Yeah. That's okay, Lord. Whatever you want, that's what I want. I waited for the Lord patiently, remember? Psalm 140? Yeah. No, Psalm 40. I forget. 140, 40. King David said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me and heard my cry. Amen. In other words, I waited and waited and waited and waited and waited until He turned to me, leaned over to me, faced me, and heard my petition and heard my cry. Then He brought me up out of that horrible pit. Out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and put a song, a new song in my mouth, a song of praise, my testimony. Yes. Praise so yeah, never accept that, that you don't have enough faith. I'm tired of hearing preachers teach that and the people feel bad. And when they, they, they keep your faith in God, would you stand with me, please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Amen. you know, as I look over this congregation, I know it's obvious I, I know who you are. I believe you're all in Christ. No sense making an altar call. I believe you're all saved here.